If you actually want to be able to use your 3D scans, you'll have to clean and optimize them. So in this video, I'll show you how you can do that. First, import the 3D scan into Blender, rotate it until it is about correct, and then boolean away the unwanted parts. You can do that by adding in a cube and scaling it so it covers the parts of the mesh you want to keep, then adding a boolean modifier to the 3D scan, setting the mode to intersect and the solver to fast, because exact uses a lot of memory when used on high-res models. Then select the cube in the object slot and apply the Boolean modifier. After that I'll remove the garbage that the boolean left behind and then I'll export the model and open it in MeshLab. The link to download MeshLab will be in the description. Then once that's imported I'll go to filters, cleaning and repairing and click repair non-manifold edges. I'll leave the settings how they are and click apply. Then I'll go to filters, remeshing simplification and reconstruction, then click on close holes and change the max size to be close to 300. Then I'll click apply and go to filters, selection and click select none then also click apply then we'll decimate the model by going to filters remeshing simplification and reconstruction and then clicking on simplification quadratic edge collapse decimation set the target number of faces to whatever you want i'll set it to 20,000 and click apply now that that's finished decimating i'll export the model as a ply because exporting obj files crashes mesh up i'll uncheck save texture files and make sure that normal is checked then i'll click ok now i'll reopen blender and import the decimated mesh. As you can see the rotation is wrong now so I'll rotate it by 90 degrees on the x-axis. Then I'll UV unwrap it and shade it smooth because if we don't shade it smooth we will have some weird artifacts when baking normals. Now the low res model is done so I'll export it again as a collada file it's because the application I'll use for baking the textures plays nicely with them. And then I'll also re-export the high res model as a collada file. Now we're ready to bake the texture and details from the high res model to the low res model which we will do in xnorm. Load in the high res model by clicking on high definition meshes, right clicking and then selecting add mesh. Then search the high res model and open it. After that right click on the high res model and select base texture to bake. Then select the 3D scans texture. After that go to low definition meshes, right click again, add mesh and load in the low res mesh. Then go to the tools tab, click ray distance calculator and hit go. It's worth it to wait for about 100 seconds to allow X normal to better refine its result. What this does is it calculates the distance distance between the low res and the high res models and adjust some parameters to prevent artifacts. Then go to the baking options tab and select the output folder, image prefix and image format you want the images to be saved as. I'll use TIFF so I can have a little bit more bit depth in the images. For the resolution I'll select 8K. For the renderer I'll select the default bucket renderer and for anti-aliasing I'll select 4X anti-aliasing. The maps I want to bake are the height map, normal map and base color and once I've selected that I'll just hit start and wait until the normal and height maps finished baking because after the height map finished baking a window called HM Tone Mapper will open and in there we have to select the min and max points of the displacement texture. To find out which min and max values will work here check the checkbox debug min max points then start by adjusting the min point until there are no red spots left and then adjust the max point until there are no blue spots left then take the larger one of the two and copy it to the other slot only inverted keeping both of these the same number will ensure that the midpoint of the displacement will stay at the middle. Now that that's done just close the HM tone mapper window and wait for the other textures to finish baking as well. Now the textures finished baking so I'll now apply them to the low res model and you can see it doesn't look low res anymore. We haven't lost any detail from the high res which is amazing because we have 100 times less faces than the high res model. Also if you see any issues with the normal map base color or displacement map you can just fix them by clone stamping other parts of the map onto the point that has issues inside Blender's texture paint workspace. Now I can compare the low res model to the high res model and I bet you can't spot a difference the right one was the low res one I, I bet you couldn't see that so yes it's pretty amazing but if this video helped you at all please watch this video next and subscribe